All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Rank Rides. So before you watch this video, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Be nice. The video is going to be choppy. The video is going to be nuts. It's, it, it's, it took me a long time to do the video. I brought in help towards the end to help me film it. It's gonna take a little while, uh, some weird camera angles and it's over the course of a few days. It's not a smooth video, but I did my best. My cameraman, Sean, comes in at the end. He does his best, so thank you very much, Sean. The video is lengthy, as is all my videos where I do an install video. The install video is done from the perspective of someone who is doing it for the first time. I don't do my videos where I do the whole thing and then undo it and do it again and show you the easy way to do it. I keep in all my mistakes, I keep in all my faults, and so you guys can learn from because chances are if I'm making a mistake doing it, you're probably gonna make the same mistake. So I teach you what to avoid in doing it by showing you my errors. So just be nice, be kind, and enjoy the video. Check out below in the description section down below, I have chapter titles to help go through the video. So if you're doing the install and you just want to go right to the ends of how to attach the fender, you can go to that chapter title and zip right to it. If you like these videos, please subscribe. That's how I know that you like it. That's how I know you want more. So take a second, hit that subscribe button. Also check out my Etsy page. That's a good way to support the channel is to buy some merch or other stuff. I also, I saw a lot of different motorcycle stuff for the bike. So for the Riker, Baharan, other things coming. I have a few other things that I'm gonna be selling down there. So constantly go back and check out the Etsy page for what's new. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Riker Rides. I appreciate you guys being here as always. So I had a little blip um, the past, uh, I guess it was last weekend or two weekends ago. I, I don't know, time kind of blurs at this point. But I got in a little fender bender uh, and literally a fender bender, someone ran into my fender. And it was another uh, Riker that went into me and it is a minor, minor damage. Um, there's no frame damage, no one got hurt. So after all that said and done, it's still annoying. My bike is out of commission because my fender is not on and all the lights, it's just kind of a, a pain in the butt. But again, luckily no one was hurt, but I wanted to kind of just kind of show you my experience, what happens and how it happens. And this video is gonna start off with a public service announcement on how to actually, when you're in a large group, whether it's 50 Rikers trying to park at a restaurant or you're parking in close area around other cars or even more so around other people, there's a correct way to park your bike. And the correct way to do it is honestly, put your bike in neutral and walk in it. That way, there, you're guaranteed not to accidentally think you're in reverse, hit the throttle and hit somebody like me. This has happened to me twice. Um, so it's definitely worthy of reporting and worthy of discussing with people on how to do it. But either way, it could have easily been avoided if it had put their bike in neutral and rolled it into the parking spot. So a lot of people aren't aware that the bike actually even has neutral because it's not really talked about. It's not a traditional neutral because there's no gears. So it's actually the area between forward and reverse. I'm gonna take a second and go show you exactly what I'm referring to. Uh, and that is the best way when you're getting into a parking spot surrounded by others to make sure that you're going slowly enough and you're not gunning it. And especially if you're new on the bike or even a little inexperienced, this is the best way to do it. Even if you do have experience, this guarantees you not to hit somebody, not to hit me 
stop hitting me in the parking spots. So let me show you how to put it in neutral because it is, it is crazy easy and it makes parking a lot easier and other situations easier. So let me show you real quick on how to get it there. Okay, Hold all on. you do is you take your parking brake and you turn, you bring it into the off position. Now your shifter here, you have, it's in forward and then in, in reverse. It's the area in between the two. So you have this little area, it's like this little sweet spot where it's not in forward, it's not in reverse. And you just simply rolls the bike very easily. You can use one finger to, to do it backwards or forwards. It comes in extremely handy in a lot of situations. So don't be afraid to use neutral. It can avoid a lot of problems. So that's my PSA, my public service announcement to you. Use neutral more often in tight spots. It'll help. Okay. Let me show you the damage. So the person, and I have a little video clip and I will put it on the screen right now of the accidents. It was very minor, but I'll put a little kind of, so you have an idea of what happened, but here's what happened. She was in reverse, put it in forward. Maybe she thought she was still in reverse and then boom, right into my wheel and hit my fender um head on i mean like t-boned it you know hit it this way luckily nothing happened to my rim nothing happened to my wheels but it knocked my fender completely off so it broke this piece down here and it also broke yeah, let me see if i can get in here so it broke it clean off of these two bolts one, two. So what I did, and when it happened, it knocked it off. The fender was just kind of hanging off the bike. So what I did, I just took them off, but I zip tied the, the fender to, um, just the fender, I zip tied it to the inside here to hold it up. So that way I wouldn't lose it trying to get home. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to replace the fender. And the fender comes in two parts. There's um, an outer part and an inner part. And I'll put um, both numbers up in case you need to replace them. You can get them from a few different places. CheapCycleParts.com is one. Um, your dealership can order it for you as well. Whatever gets it there quicker is my, my first go-to to do it. Uh, I'm not even sure if Amazon sells them or not. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so that's what we're gonna work on now. I'm gonna need to replace my fender lights because they're stuck on the inside here. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to take this off and be able to reuse it. So I'm gonna have to buy a new one of these um, to replace the outer wrap, the outer part of the, the wheel, the fender. I'm gonna have to replace the wrap as well. So. Overall, there wasn't a lot of damage. It's just kind of a pain in the butt to make sure it gets all done correctly. And I don't want to ride around with a loose damaged fender. So let's get to it. Okay, because it was knocked off those bolts, cracked off those bolts, this is the reason why I'm unable to ride until this gets replaced. Obviously, this isn't safe. Uh, the zip ties help me get it home, but you know, as you can see, it's just kind of until it's seated properly and on properly, it's just rubbing against the wheel. Uh, I'm sorry, the tire, which obviously is not good at all. So it's a pain. Yeah. What I'm doing now is, in order to take this off, you need to get at these bolts right here there's four four bolts one two i'm sorry there's four bolts one two three and then there's another one hidden down here is four these bolts are super super hard to get off crazy crazy hard so what i did was i used a 13 millimeter socket i put it on and i used leverage um, i went out to 
um, Home Depot and I got a PVC pipe and it helped me get these off. It's, it was actually kind of fun to do. Let me, let me show you how it works. It's hard to get off. So what I did was I put on my sockets and then all I did was I just took this, put it on top, and then with just the smallest amount of pressure, hold on, with the smallest amount of pressure, it worked perfectly. It was great. It was so helpful. Um, someone once told me, I think it's a famous expression, that with the right lever you can move the world. And this has proven to be exactly that. So if you don't have a breaker bar, this is a, like a $5, depending on if you have it size, $5 to $10 piece. And it is comes in very handy. So this helps me get those, those bolts off. And now I have to get the rest off. And then I'll show you what comes next once I take this off. Uh, now that you have the fender completely off and ready to kind of work with, it's still attached because of the wires. So this is my connection to here for my Sling Mods fender lights. So I unhook that, and then now you have to unhook this part, which is works to your blinker lights. So this just kind of pops right off. Remember where it goes, it has this little metal clip that slides back into here. So now that this is off, you want to detach these two, sorry, the, these two pieces, you want to detach them. And remember that this clip is what's going to connect it back onto here. So let's detach that clip. So this piece pushes down. And it comes out that way. So now this is detached and we need to go through these wires and so we can get access to the fender and to be able to replace it. To be able to take this whole fender off, you need to get rid of, well, not get rid of, but take apart all these wires. And so the wires are, if you look closely, they are they are tucked into these little grooves. See this little groove right here? So they're all tucked into this little bitty groove. And the grooves go all the way through the top and they run through the bottom and there's another groove there. So the wires are all tucked into the groove. So you pull them out from the grooves and that frees up the wires. Now there's one more wire up here that is zip tied on. So we're going to use very carefully, we're going to use some wire cutters and perform a little surgery on these. Don't cut the red wire. Okay, so let's see what we can do. What I'm doing is I'm getting as close to down here as possible. Let me uh, zoom in for you a little bit. So I'm cutting right there. Hopefully I can get it. And then just remember what you're doing to put everything back. So this frees up. And there's one more. Now this allows you to, it's still hooked on through here and the wires run all the way through the inside. I'm going to leave this attached for right now because all I really need now is to get rid of these bolts that are in here, take them apart. So there's one, two, three bolts on the inside that need to be taken off and then you need to undo these clamps and I'm going to show you an easy way 
to undo those clamps without breaking them so you can redo them. These, I am just using a eight millimeter socket. These are very easy to get off. They're not tough like, like the other ones. And again, there's just um, three to get off. Okay, I missed two screws to, that I did it so I failed to mention. They're up top here. One, two. And those, you need a Torx 20 to get them out. Also, they are not difficult at all to get out. Um, very, very easy. What we're trying to do next is pull apart the support fender, which is this part, from the outside fender, which is this part. And if you look closely, we've got these tabs that are holding it together. All the screws have been taken out. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tabs, I believe. So my friend Lauderdale has done this before and he taught me how to do it. It's um, an easy way to do it because you don't want to break the tabs because then you have to buy, you know, another, you have to buy a whole new set if you break the tabs. So let's see if his way of doing it works. Let's try it out. All right, this is a back-breaking job for some reason. Okay, his thought was, you're really just kind of putting pressure on this and pulling it twisting it and pulling it away from it and it goes pop 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 and they all come out so let's see if it's that easy or am i going to need to kind of get a uh, butter knife and or, or a flathead screwdriver and pick them all apart so i'm going to try his way because i trust him let's see if it works Yes, oh, it worked. <sighs> Make sure nothing's coming off. It's kind of like a twisted pull. Momentum. Ah! <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, it worked. Ah, oh, thank you, Lauderdale. That was very cool. All the tabs, I don't know if you can see, but all the tabs are still intact. So that is awesome. Woo! I'm excited. <laughs> all right, so we may be able to salvage this. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this Sling Mods uh, fender light, see if I can salvage it and re-glue it onto my new fender which will hopefully, it's still hot here in Florida. So the new fender will hopefully be here later today, if not tomorrow. And then I can finish this up, finish the install and get my bike back on the road. It's been out of commission now for, um, it's been almost two weeks. So I'm very excited to get it back on the road. And I will come back and let you know what else is going on here. <laughs> The support fender that I'm replacing is still connected to the main fender, the outside fender, because of the blinker light is still attached. So that's what this is in here. And you need to push on this little tab really hard, and it's a little bit awkward, and then it pulls right out. And then you remember where it goes through? Uh, on the fender and you run it through 
And now we've got it completely separated. Well done, everyone. Well done. This is going straight to the trash. This is much heavier than this one. This one is very, very light, but the support one that holds everything on is much more of a solid material. Now we wait for the new fender to come in. All right, we are back for day two. So the fender came in and we're gonna put it back together. Hopefully I'll be able to show you a step-by-step. -step. I did manage to burn myself. I've never, fun fact, I've never used a heat gun and not gotten burned. I don't know if that's a fun fact or a very sorry fact, but I've never done that. But I had to use the heat gun to take off my fender light from Sling Watt. So I had to take that off. So I used the heat gun to take it off so I can transfer it back on to the new fender. And that's how I got my boo-boo. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we're all good. I have all my tools out ready to go. I have a 14 millimeter socket for the big bolts. I have a eight millimeter for the small bolts and a little tiny Torx 20 for the itty bitty ones, the itty bitty screws. So I hope this is very easy to do, but let's, let's work it out. Let's try it out and um, we'll do it together. So this is, again, there's two parts of the fender. There's an inside support piece and then an outside piece. So we are connecting the two pieces together before we put it on. And if you look on the inside of the fender, it's you have these clamps, these little push tabs, but they don't really push. They're really kind of hard to do. So we are putting those into these spaces right here is where it's all going to connect. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going through it to make sure we're all on the same page. I've got my friend Sean helping me record today, so it should be a lot better, a lot smoother. So thank you, Sean. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Ah, oh, see, he's got this awesome South African accent. Hopefully he'll talk more. Feel free to interject with your cool accent. Yeah, I'll do my best. Ah, oh, I'll do his best. <laughs> okay. So what we're doing now, if you could capture this, Sean, we are sliding this in the place, lining up all the screw holes, lining up all the tabs, and just going through and making sure it gets on. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. And it's not that easy. Let's see if a little bit of pressure. I'm so afraid to break everything with the plastic. <sighs> if anyone knows a better way to do this that has done it, please comment below to help others. It's just not getting on there enough. Um, maybe we should start on this side. You want to hear that clip noise for sure. I did manage to break one tab right here. That tab did not, um, that tab broke off and is still inside of um, this one. That tab is still right there. So I do have one missing tab where I think some super glue will be able to hold that in place, I'm hoping. Put downward pressure on it. Maybe that'll help. No, oh. <laughs> this is not going so well. Okay, let me try again. All right. So what I'm trying to do is get these tabs. Well, that one's broken. No, this one's here. 
So get this tab into this hole and make it work. Yes, that's the noise you want to hear. Yes. <laughs> yep, yeah, there you go. So you just kind of forcefully, without, I'm not putting all my weight on this, but I'm putting enough on it where it's going in. Ah, perfect. Whew. So you're pulling up rather than yes. pushing down. Yeah, I'm pushing down with my foot pushing out my foot on this and then pulling up. So this is the one that's missing. Um, so what I'm gonna do, when, when after it's on, I'm gonna put a little super glue on this side to hold it in place. But okay. All right, so that's the beauty of my channel is I leave all my mistakes in. I'm not gonna be like, oh, there you go. The Fed is put together. I'm gonna show you my mistakes and how to do it. A lot of breath, I bet I need to work out. <laughs> um, so that's what we're doing here is I'm trying to show you the ways that works best for me. And so hopefully you can learn in case you need to replace a fender. So yes, I had an accident, but um, I like to see the good in things. And as much of it's been a pain in the butt, ordering this parts, being without a bike for a little bit. The good news is I get to do this and then share my experience with you. So anyway, let's continue. And now we're gonna put in the screws. So these three go in there, and these are the eight millimeter. And the bolt-in washers. They're what? The bolt-in bolt washers? washers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good call, Sean. Good call, Sean. Cheerio. <laughs> that's, that's not South African. <laughs> it still sounds good, though. Right, mate? That's Australian. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. So I'm just gonna finger tighten them and then go back and, and go through them one more time. And then don't forget there's also two more pieces up here. Two more bolts that go in here. Okay, a mistake I made was putting the whole fender back together and without hooking up the um the turn signal the directionals so i had to take it apart unscrew a couple screws because we need access to this so make sure you do your wiring first and then attach your support fender so right now i didn't take it all apart just took some of it apart because we're going to need to get into this area right here all right so the wire that we need to put in there is this one so here's the two wires that need to get connected to the fender. Um, this one just clamps on to the inside of the fender and this one gets hooked up in between here. So this needs to get done before you do anything. And it gets awkward real fast because you know, obviously you don't have a whole lot of wiring to use. So the wiring is gonna go in through here. It's kind of hard to show you guys, but I'm um, gonna do my best. So, can you see, is there enough light? Or should I put light on there? Yeah, um, maybe turn the lights a bit. Let me, uh, all right, so, yeah. okay, there you go. Maybe that's better? Yeah. Are you able to see? Yeah. So there's, next to this little mark here, there's a hole is in here. That's, if you remember, that's where we unplug it from. This, we're, all just re we're just reversing what we did originally. So we need to make sure that it's going in there. So you wanna make sure you put it in the right direction so this is up because this is a little tab that we pushed. Sorry, my hands are filthy. Obviously I'm working. Um, so this is a little tab 
that we pushed to put in. So it's not that complicated, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this tab, it's gonna be run through here. And eh. so, ah, it's so awkward, the positioning. That's why it's best to do it ahead of time. All right, let me just prop my hands in here. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we got it in the right way. And we're gonna fish our way in here and make sure we hear it really snap in. Let's listen for the snap. Okay, ready? All right, I heard it. Did you guys hear it? I heard it. So it's in there nice and tight. It's in there, it's good to go. Um, what we can do before we check, we could actually, before we put everything back together, because everything officially is hooked up right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the bike and make sure before we put everything on, make sure it's actually working. So let's try this. Yeah, it's working. Yeah? Well, the one light's on. That's perfect. But the, what about the flicker? What flicker? The, the turning signal. Um, all right, yeah, let's try that. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. So it's working. Okay, it's working. perfect. So that's good news. It's always good to see that it's working. And now we're going to put it back together. Okay, so before we put this back on, we have to clamp everything back together the way we did earlier. So we need to hook these up. It's, it's incredibly awkward positioning to do this because there's just not enough wire. Um, so we have some screws to put in and we have these couple of pieces we need to, those little clamps to get back on. You want to make sure you hear that noise again to make sure it's on there good and tight. Okay, it's not, so let's try again. You want to make sure, if you remember use a blanket or towel underneath so you're not scratching up your fender. That's always a good idea. All the clips are in place. I put all the screws and bolts and all the good stuff back together. The lights are plugged in and now we're just kind of placing everything the way it needs to get placed. So the last thing we need to do before we put it on, I have this label. This is for my um, fender, my fender lights. So that'll plug in, that'll plug in later. I don't know, all right, where? <laughs> Look at that. Let's talk about this. So the only thing we're doing now is clamping this onto this. So again, like we talked about, it has a little clamp on here. We originally took this apart, which you don't need to. This can stay together when you take the fender off. So now this is going to clamp just like this. See this little space? It has a real space for it right there. And then it pushes all the way in, fits perfectly. Now what you wanna do, if you remember from before, is you want to tuck these cords away in through here. 
So there's grooves for you to go. Again, very awkward. Also a little reminder when you're putting your screws in, never over tighten because you can strip the screws as well. So that's always just a, a friendly reminder. Yeah, especially the, with being plastic. Yes, exactly. Thank you, South African Sean. <laughs> so this feeds through here. So it goes in and out, it kind of weaves in and out of this direction here. And then it goes up through here. And it's all tucked away pretty neatly. This is on nice and sturdy. This is plugged in very well. And that is it. You might want to put a piece of, um, of black tape on here just to kind of hold it steady. Um, I actually think I might do that. First of all, let's put it on the right way. It goes like this. So, oh, wait a minute, maybe this works better now. <laughs> <laughs> Will work. Okay, let me let me put it back in. You want to come on this side, Sean? Sure. The important thing is you want to make sure you have nothing that's um, that's touching, no wires are touching the wheels, obviously. So you want to make sure everything is tucked away properly, and uh, don't be afraid to use zip ties too if you need to. And I'm just going over the tape that was existing there that comes with the bike and was kind of taping up these wires a little bit. All right, I am very happy with how this looks inside here. Very, very happy, okay. Again, this is the sling mods. This isn't on every bike. These are my fender lights. So don't worry about that one. Just tuck that, you know, I'm just gonna tuck that one away. All right, we are in the finishing stages now. Yay, me. All right, I'm gonna try one more time, make sure everything works because we messed around with it a little bit. Yep. Yep, perfect, okay. All right. Yay, almost done. I apologize that this video is not the normal uh, smooth quality that you're used to. It's been a really awkward installation. So I apologize, it's, I'm doing the best I can. Sean's doing the best he can, getting in here, getting all the angles. If you have any questions, always just feel free to comment below if you're having issues and I'll, I'll be able to walk you through it or FaceTime you. Uh, so, well, we're doing the best we can. some of these on. All I'm doing right now is just lining up these holes, making sure we're not pinching any wires. Ah, woohoo! <laughs> Yay! It caught. So you just want to finger tighten them just a little bit once they get in. Feels so good when it catches. You're like so happy. We are in the final stages. All four of these big bolts are in. It's these bolts are going to be the hardest part of your entire project. They're hard to take out, they're hard to put in. These four bolts are the most time consuming of the entire project. Oh, it's horrible. But I am just in the phase now, in the stage, I'm just tightening it. I am making sure they are super, super tight. They were hard to get off. I had to use um, a breaker bar or I used my PVC pipe to take it off. So when you're putting it back on, you want to make sure it is on there super, super tight. The best way to do it is to turn your tire 
So you've got, you turn your wheels so you've got your bolts exposed. And then when you work on these two, the bottom ones, you turn the tie the other way, it just makes it, you, got, you have a lot more room. That's a little trick I found out as well. We are done. It is on there good and tight. I'm just gonna get some uh, 3M tape and put my fender lights back on and we are good to go. It is done. I'm so excited. Um, thank you again, Sean, for helping me. It, it was, I couldn't have done it without your help, so thank you so much. Pleasure. And thank you for your South African accent every now and then. <laughs> say something cool, Sean. Cool. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Somehow when you have a cool accent, no matter what, you can just say poop and it comes out sounding sexy. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So we are done. Thank you so much for watching this video um, and, and staying with me to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next week. Ride safe. Don't bump into people. I, I think that's just a good PSA. Use your reverse lever, your neutral lever, um, when you're in a parking space so you don't hit people like me. And uh, So try to avoid this if you can. But if not, I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.